Hey there, I'm Jesse Funk, the creator of Multiply, Divide, and Conquer in all the games here at DaVinci's Room. First, thank you for picking up a copy of Multiply, Divide, and Conquer. Uh, I really appreciate it. As a small, independent developer of board games, um, I need all the love and support I can get from people like you, so thank you so much for joining me. In this video and this video series, we're going to be talking about how to play the game, but in this video in particular, let's talk about how to set up the board. Anytime you're doing a new board game, there's always lots of things to learn. So if you have any questions for me, I don't cover anything in these videos, please email me, F-U-N-K-J at DaVinci'sRoom.com. That's FunkJ at DaVinci'sRoom.com. All right, so on to setting up the board. First, you have to figure out how difficult you want the game to be. So there are up to six enemy red math magicians, these red pawns, for you to choose from for how difficult you want the game to be. We're gonna set the game up for easy, which uses three of the red pawns here. And as you can see on your board, there are 13 different little campsites. I call them encampments or campsites, something like that. Um, at various points in time in this video, I'm sure. And our red math magicians, these red pawns, are going to go on these campsites. It's gonna vary every single game because here's what we do. We're gonna do a little equation. Math starts right off, right off the bat. So we're going to roll our two dice. In my case, I got a six and a four. We need to multiply those. We get 24. Now we add the tens and the ones unit. Here, we're taking you back to grade, grade school math here. Tens and ones unit, two and four, that gives us six. So our red pawn goes on the six encampment. Now we're gonna keep doing this until we've placed all of our red pawns. If you get the same result, say somehow I get a six again, you don't place a second one on that. You keep rolling until they're on different encampments. So let's roll, see what we get. Nine and three, that's gonna be 27. Adds to be nine, two and seven equals nine. So that goes on the nine encampment. One more to go. Oh, dice trying to get away from me. Six and four again, that's not gonna help us. All right, six and 10 again, six and zero, 60. Sometimes it takes a minute. Eight times six is gonna be 48, and that's 12. So four plus eight equals 12, so we put it on the 12. Now we've got them all distributed. Um, if it takes you a minute to do your math, that's okay. It's good for practice, it's good for me as well. Once we've got our red math magicians on their encampments, we have to place goo tokens around them. You place goo tokens on the space in which they stand, that campsite, and the surrounding eight spaces. The exceptions are if there are rocks, boulders on those spaces, you do not need to place any kind of goo token there because players can't travel there. And if you're at the edge of the board, like with our six and nine spaces, you don't need to try to play anything place anything off the side of the board. So we'll place these all here. Our 12 is the one that gets the full treatment. All nine goo tokens. Now that we've done that, we also need to place a goo token on the red castle and the three surrounding spaces by the red castle. Your goo tokens try to run away from you, just capture them, you'll be okay. Okay, so now that we've done that, the rest of your goo tokens need to be placed in piles. Now, I've already done this here, um, but they need to be placed in piles of 20s, and they, and they end up acting as a countdown timer, and I'll cover that later on, but it speeds up the game when more goo gets on the board. Um, that's also why if you start with more pieces, more enemy red players on the board, then the game plays faster and it's also more difficult to win. Um, so now that we have all of our goo, all of our red players on the board, we need to place our tokens on the board, our three blue math magicians. They go anywhere inside of the blue kingdom. I always put them here at the closest area to the edges um, because that's what makes the most sense to me. But you can, strictly speaking, place them anywhere you like. Now, that is the basic setup for how you get started to play the game. To learn about more things in the game, how you do other things, watch the other videos in the series, and as mentioned, if you have any questions, please email me. I'm happy to talk about gameplay and clarify anything for you. F-U-N-K-J at DaVinci'sRoom.com.